Hi friends, so in this video we are going to discuss about internal memory. Uh, internal memory uh, mostly it may be uh, it will represent the primary memory. Uh, primary memory is a uh, inter between the memory will be placed inter between secondary memory and the uh, processor CPU. So in this slide uh, we will see uh, how the semiconductor memory used. Okay, so in the other computer. Uh, random access memory will be used as a main memory uh, here uh, to build the uh, random access memory so at that time they, uh, the designers used uh, ferromagnetic loops to build the random access memory so the ferromagnetic loops may be called as a uh, core magnetic core so after that uh, period of, after period of uh, after period of time uh, the micro microelectronics has been uh, overcome this uh, magnetic core memory concept uh, that is uh, related to the car related to the cost and the speed uh, with, the, uh, with this the microelectronics overcome the uh, core memory concept so the today uh, most of the system so you can see it is all of the systems they are having the semiconductor chips to represent the uh, main memory concept right so okay semiconductor memory is a memory cell so this is the memory cell in the next slide we will discuss about the how the memory cell will work uh, in here uh, the memory cell all the memory cells may have certain uh, properties the properties or uh, three properties will be there one is the it will represent the state okay so it may be uh, the binary state 0 or 1 so the uh, it may be uh, the states may be a stable state or the semi stable state Okay, so then, uh, so it's capable of the memory cell is capable of uh, being written. Okay, so the, it will uh, it, it will be used to uh, set the state that is a zero or one. It's a uh, capable of uh, write. In same time, it's a capable of read. So if the some data is stored in the memory cell, it can be uh, sensed by the uh, processor or some uh, process. Okay, so again, each memory cell will have three functional terminals. Uh, or there so the functional terminals are one is the select uh, terminal and second one is the control terminal and third one is the read or write terminal okay so the select select terminal how the select terminal will work so example if you are uh, seeing here is a memory cell but if you are saying a memory it's a bunch of uh, example it's an array of memory cells will be there so the array of memory cells uh, in the array of memory cells how how the process or how the uh, processor can select only one memory cell in from the particular memory so, so based on this select terminal the particular cell will be selected then the, with the help of this control terminal uh, the particular uh, read or write can be selected okay so after this operation so data can be based on the operation that is a type of operation the data can be written in the cell or the data can be sensed from the cell so these are this is the information related to your memory cell and the, how the memory cell will be work in the particular memory array in this slide so we will see uh, how many types are there that is a random access memory and the ROM so these two are the major types uh, ROM is a permanent memory so once if you are return, uh, return something in that so it won't be erased okay so that is a type of uh, memory that is a read only memory so the commonly the main memory the semiconductor memory will be uh, referred as a random access memory okay so random access memory so these are the parameters uh, that is a category read or write then uh, erasability so the data can be erased or how it will be uh, again uh, returned into that particular memory then uh, write mechanism so what kind of uh, mechanism used to write the data into the particular memory cell then the volatile so if the particular uh, memory is the volatile or non volatile so these these two are the different uh, two different types that is a memory types random access memory and the read only memory then here random access memory always used as a temporary storage uh, there are two traditional uh, forms are there for the random access memory that is a RAM, a RAM technology uh, one is a DRAM and second one is a SRAM so DRAM is a dynamic RAM and the second one is a static RAM okay so the dynamic RAM or the static RAM so both the RAM technology is made up of a uh, number of uh, memory cells so the, these two uh, memory uh, array the memory array is built by the number of cells so here in the DRAM 
the each cell is uh, built with the capacitor okay so the capacitor will represent uh, or used to represent the data value 1 or 0 that is a binary state and the capacitor have the natural tendency saying that uh, example uh, if you if the power if you are uh, continuously if you are uh, feeding the power into the capacitor also it have the tendency to leak the power so that is a major disadvantage of this uh, particular capacitor concept in the memory cell so you need a, a refreshing circuit to maintain the power in the uh, capacitor so this is the information related to DRAM and the DRAM cell ok so the following diagram will see how the DRAM structure is there so this is the DRAM structure every uh, DRAM memory cell it will be look like this ok so here are two components major components are there one is the transistor and second one is the capacitor ok so this one used as a bit line that is uh, data so you can pass the data here uh, one or you can read the data from this line so for write operation uh, the use uh, the process or uh, the processor need to uh, send the data here or uh, place the data in the bit line so the data will be passed and it will be stored in the capacitor or uh, if the uh, data want to be uh, that is sensed from the capacitor so address line need to select this address cell so after this the transistor will act as a switch transistor will act as a switch so then if the switch is on the data the power whatever the, the power is stored here it will be moved to the bit line so this is how uh, the trans uh, the uh, dynamic ram uh, will work in the um, uh, memory that is a memory array so each ma the memory cell in the memory array so it will be look like okay in the next slide so we'll see how the static ram will work okay so this is the static ram cell so here uh, six uh, transistors are there so because it will be a flip-flop model okay so in here uh, it will, again it will represent uh, two states that is a logical state 0 and logical state 1 okay so here uh, how the logical state 0 and how the logical state uh, 1 will be represented here so here two common points are there that is a C1 and C2 these two points will represent the logical state 1 or 0 so they just consider the uh, first state here uh, logical state uh, that is a 1 so if the logical state is you uh, if the uh, the particular memory cell want to represent the logical state of 1 so c1 should be higher and c2 should be uh, lower okay so this is the high c1 is high c2 is low then transistor 1 and transistor 4 both are in the off condition then uh, transistor 3 and transistor 2 will be in the on condition so this is the setup to represent the logical state 1 so if the if you want to represent the logical state of 0 so C1 will be in the lower condition and C2 will be in the higher condition. So this is how uh, the logical state 0 will be represented and T1 and T4 will be in the on condition and T3 and T2 will be in the off condition. So this is how the static RAM memory cell will work to represent the logical state of 0 and logical state of 1. So in the next slide we will discuss how the DRAM and SRAM you can come back. Okay? So both the RAM are volatile. So you want to store the data, so the always the power need to be on. So power must be uh, continuously supplied. Okay. So dynamic uh, RAM, that is a DRAM, is a simpler and also it's a smaller one. If you are comparing with the uh, static RAM, so it's a simpler, simple and smaller. So DRAM is more dense, that is a smaller cells, more cells per the unit of area. So you want a, uh, that is a in the smaller. Uh, memory concept okay so you can use this DRAM uh, that may be uh, but the only major disadvantage here is supporting of that is a refreshing circuitry is required that is a uh, because the DRAM is using the capacitor concept so SRAM is generally it's a somewhat uh, somewhat faster than the DRAM if you're comparing with the DRAM so SRAM is always faster because it's a semiconductor memory uh, semiconductor means it's a chip concept so chip concept is there uh, only because of the flip-flop so number of flip flops are used to build the semiconductor uh, SRAM array, uh, SRAM memory array. So SRAM is used for the cache memory and the DRAM is used for the main memory. So this is how uh, you can uh, differentiate DRAM and the SRAM. Okay. So in the next slide, we'll see this chip logic. How the uh, memory cell will be placed in the uh, memory array. Okay, so semiconductor me uh, memory comes in a package of chips. Okay, so package chips will be uh, the pack. The chip will be in the package of memory array. Okay, so sem 
here uh, e the uh, each chip contains an array of memory cell so uh, again this is the another information here uh, then semiconductor memory so in the while uh, if the designer is building the semiconductor memory so one of the key, key issue is uh, so at a time so you can write or read so this is the major disadvantage of this semiconductor memory so same way how you are looking the physical arrangement of the memory cell in the memory array the same uh, the same view will be available for the logical arrangement also so there is a law there is a two different views are there physical view and the logical view of the memory so the system will see the logical view so both the views are same in the arrangement okay so the array is organized into W words of B bits. Okay, so example you can consider a 16 MB chip. chip. So how the 16 MB chip will be organized? That is a 1 MB into 16 bit. So this is how uh, the memory chip of that is a 16 MB chip will be organized. Okay, the following diagram will see the 16 MB uh, DRAM organization. Okay, and this is the diagram. Okay, so you can. Uh, so I think uh, I'll give this uh, diagram in the. Uh, link or following link also you can check the uh, that is a tags I have provided so where this uh, material is available okay so you can check this uh, check this diagram there so here uh, four control lines are there one is a row address select and second one is a column address select and write enable output enable so these are the four uh, control uh, signals uh, control terminals are there so with this you can go and select the particular row so here in this uh, row address buffer is there column address buffer is there and here row uh, that is a row uh, decoder and the column decoder both are there so example here uh, how the uh, the example in the next slide i'll, I'll show the uh, what is the information then we'll uh, when, then we'll see this diagram so here memory selecting how the memory will be selected in the particular array memory cell example in this case uh, four bits are read or written in the at a time that is in the consideration of 16 MB DRAM in the 16 MB DRAM so only four bits are allowed to read or write from the particular memory array okay so logically uh, the memory array is organized as a four uh, square array that is an example uh, 2048 uh, by 2048 so this will be considered as a, a 4 MB uh, 4 MB memory, uh, memory array then again 4 MB memory array and 4 MB memory array and 4 MB memory array. So this is the 4 into 4 MB memory array. It will be equivalent to the 16 MB memory array. So this is how the memory array will be organized here. So this is here. This is the memory array. So okay. So here uh, 4 into 4 MB. So this is how it is represented. So if you want to access a particular memory cell in this memory array group, so you need a row address same way you need a column address okay so column address is a vertical one and row address is a horizontal one so horizontal one is the row one and the uh, column is the vertical one okay so this is how you can uh, select a particular memory cell in the memory array okay so you need so to represent uh, 2048 uh, memory location uh, memory locations you need uh, 11 address 11 address lines okay so in the next one we will see how memory uh, the address lines can be calculated okay so here this is up so 2048 equal to 2 to the power of 11 so this ma this many lines are required so there is 11 address lines are required to represent to uh, reach the memory uh, cell in the particular memory array okay so here each horizontal line connects to the select terminal of each cell in its row that is the example row address row address decoder will be selected select this particular line then column address selector will use this one and select the particular cell then the it will apply the particular operation example data in that is a write or sense the data so this is the introduction about the uh, semiconductor memory that is an internal memory uh, then it, it always used used as a primary memory or the cache memory there are two types we have discussed here one is a DRAM and the second one is a static RAM. Uh, these two are the major types or uh, traditional types who are the RAM technology. And the next video will discuss about how the data will be uh, that is sensed from the memory. If any error occurs, that is why you are writing one data will be there. While you are reading another data is there, how to uh, 
uh, identify that particular error in the in the particular memory cell. We'll discuss it, uh, discuss in the next video.